Welcome to Exploring Theology. I'm your host, J.D. Martin, and today is Inauguration Day 2021, and uh, a lot of people are fretting, a lot of Christians are worried and concerned, and today I want to talk about how it is that we can properly uh, interact with this day. Uh, is today a day of rejoicing? Well, it depends on a whole bunch of things, but for many Christians, it's not a day of rejoicing. It's a day of fear and anxiety and uncertainty. And I can tell you, though, it doesn't have to be that way. For us, we can have the peace that passes all understanding. And you have to understand that a watching world is watching you, and they're watching to see how you're going to react. They're watching to see whether you really trust the Lord or whether or not you trust politics or have an idol of the government or United States or whatever else, or if you rest in God's promises. Recognize that the things that you do and the things that you say and the way that you react to this day will ultimately preach a sermon louder than a thousand sermons that people will never hear because they're going to hear your sermon. They're going to see your life and they're going to see your reaction. So let's redeem this opportunity in order to respond to this crisis or this event or this day in the proper way. So I think a, a helpful message for us to remember is actually the message that Jesus, when he was 12 years old, said to his mother when he was left at the temple. You remember the scene that he was, uh, he, his family went um, and they thought that Jesus was with one of their relatives or their friends only to discover that Jesus was in fact left in Jerusalem. And they rush back to Jerusalem and they find Jesus and say, what are you doing here? And Jesus, even at 12 years old recognizing his deity and who he was said did you not know that i would be in my father's house and i must be doing my father's business now here's a word for us we must be doing our father's business you are not god God is God. You are just his servant. He has called you to do a specific task. Whoever's in the White House has absolutely nothing to do with what you should be doing. I mean, think about it. If your party or a different party or any other party or some party that didn't get elected got elected, how does that change what God has called you? God has called you to proclaim the glories of him who called you out of darkness. How does who is in the office of the White House affect that? God has called you to love people, to share the gospel, to give your money, to give your time, to pray and to read his scriptures and just to let your light so shine before others that they may see your give work good works and give glory to your father in heaven how does who is in the office change any of that the answer is it doesn't change any of it our commission is still the same our promises are still the same the salvation that we have received that's unfading undefiled and kept in heaven for us is still there our treasure is still in heaven jesus said do not store up your treasures where on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal I think a lot of us conservative, healthy Christians have so often preached against a prosperity gospel, a, a gospel that said health, wealth, and prosperity, but we in our, of ourselves live the American dream gospel, and namely, not that we want more health or wealth or prosperity, but just to hold on to the health and wealth and prosperity that we have, but we are not guaranteed that. In fact, that's why it frightens us so much to see these storm clouds coming in our way because they threaten the health and the wealth and the prosperity that we have. But guess what? We're called to let that go. Ultimately, it is God who decides whether we maintain health. And some of you who are sick understand this, that sickness came upon you and it was God who ultimately decided it was your time now to suffer for his name's sake. And the same thing with wealth. If they come and take all of your stuff, who cares? Ultimately, you'll get it all back and so much more more, that these uh, current uh, trials and temptations and these current uh, tribulations are nothing in comparison to the glory that will be received in us. So rest in the promise of God. Recognize that the election does not matter. I'll be honest with you, I forgot that it was even Inauguration Day. In some ways, I want to go and triple check that it is, in fact, Inauguration Day because I am completely not interested in that anymore because it doesn't change my mission. It's not going to steal my peace and my happiness. Ultimately, I'm here to serve God. If God wants me to go through persecution, I'll see it. I'll deal with it. Jesus said that each day we should be worried about today's troubles, for today is sufficient for itself. I have enough things to worry about today instead of trying to project in the future something that I don't even understand. So let these things give you peace and rest. And again, remember that God is good. God's throne and kingdom remains. If God wants us to magnify his name in peace, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We should be praying for peace. We should be praying that we can live a quiet and peaceful life. But sometimes God calls us 
to be a witness to him in the face of persecution. Remember Jesus said, you need to pick up your cross and follow me. And that is often taken as spiritual crosses, and it is spiritual crosses. But sometimes a guy will come knocking on your door and tell you to pick up a wooden cross and to carry it to a real hill and to be crucified on that hill. And that's the day that we say, today is the day that I will witness to Jesus Christ with my blood. And that is a glorious thing if God calls you to do that. Not that we want that, but if God calls us to make our testimony with our own blood, we will follow Christ to the literal cross just as we will follow Christ to the spiritual cross because he is sufficient and he is our true treasure. He is the one that we're ultimately seeking to be glorified with. And we want the treasure that he offers more than anything that this world offers. So I hope this message has been a blessing to you rest in his promises, rest in his goodness. You have nothing to fear, nothing to fret. It does not matter who is in the office. We ultimately don't even know if God is going to send persecution or really if God is blessing us. All we know, God could be blessing us and he could know a certain person got into the office, the, the greatest disaster in the world could have happened. Do I know that? I don't because I don't know the future, but I do know him who holds the future and he ultimately is creating a plan that when we finally know the end of all things, we'll say, God, you're good. God, you're perfect. God, you are righteous. So I hope this message has been a blessing to you. If it has, please hit like and subscribe and share this video to somebody else. If you want me to make a video for you, please put it in the comments and I would love to do that. Until next time, God bless and remain in his peace, remain in his love. Ask for the peace that passes all understanding and he will give it to you. Until next time, God bless. Bye-bye.